Hi, Susie here. Um, I'm just going to do a little uh, tutorial for you, making an easy peasy library pocket from a digi kit, and I'm also going to apply a faux vellum effect, which I think you'll find quite interesting, because all we're using is baby oil and a sheet of cheapest chips text weight paper, such as you would put in your printer, 80 GSM. Right, I've opened up Craft Artist 2 and in page setup I'm on regular and A4 landscape. So I want to add some embellishments. So I'm going to go into my digikits and browse my items and I've already uploaded Pokadoodle's Bell Papillon because I find it easier to use this graphics program to edit it. So I want a couple of butterflies and when I've scrolled down I also want that. And then in the materials I've added all her papers into materials as well as background so I've got the choice if I want something a little bit smaller. Uh, I want, I think it's uh, that one, and that one. I'm hoping that's the right one. This is my second attempt at doing this video because uh, the sound didn't record the first time around. So fingers crossed this will be a little bit better. Right, first thing I'm going to do is create the actual front of the pocket. So there's my material and the embellishment I want to sit on top of it. Right, now I'm sure there is a very easy way to resize these. Uh, in my case I just simply scoot it down from the corner until I'm happy. What I want is a nice little margin all the way around so that it's going to allow me to have edges I can turn in. Right, that I'm happy with so let's just outline the lot and group it so that means I can now resize that as I want but both of them together as opposed to separate and then juggling them. Right, my second step I want materials again and I want that bit of paper which is the right one, hallelujah, and I want that longer and I probably want it a fair bit thinner. Now I know that's made it go slightly out of proportion. To be quite frank, that does not bother me. Right, now let's see how we're doing. That is about right, I would say. What I want is enough to be able to tuck in on either side. So I'll drag that back over here again. And then because I don't like wasting paper, and especially when I'm fiddling around doing stuff, We'll have a butterfly, uh, same thing again, I'll just resize that down. Oops, come back. I do find this blue outline business a bit disconcerting at times. I tend to use Photoshop a lot, but when it's this kind of thing, um, then obviously this is where Craft Artist comes into it. So. Right, now is that the same colour? Yeah, no, let's get that off. And again, I will move it. Yeah, so that was the bluish and the pinkish. Right, that looks about right to me. Okay, so let's outline the whole lot and have a look at the print. So I'm going into File and Print Preview. Right, yes, I want it adjusted, thank you. Right, so I'm going to want to print it now. Now mine doesn't fit on the on the sheet for some reason. 
uh, but it's okay there. Actually, what I will do is cancel that and scoot over a bit. Oh, what have we done? Close preview. I'll just scoot that over slightly that side. I'll ungroup it and move that one in a bit. Uh, let's uh, regroup and we'll take another look. All right, file, print preview, and print. This new printer, I can't seem to be able to adjust this, so it does insist on doing that every single time. But you can see they're all in there, so I can go ahead and print. Hi, I'm back again. Um, as you can see, this is the sheet of paper that I've just printed off. And what I'm going to do now is apply some baby oil. Now, I've already lost my bit of cotton wool, I don't believe this. Damned it. Right, so I've just got some ordinary Johnson's baby oil. And what I'm going to do is make this library pocket transparent like vellum. Now I'm doing all this on the one sheet because I'll let it dry before I start cutting out and sticking together. So I'm starting to work on the reverse of it. And uh, you don't want to overdo the application as you can see I have. And start rubbing gently. and it goes completely transparent so give it all a good rub and then start working over on the other now you could use other oils cooking oil linseed oil something like that but um, baby oil is easy to get it smells nice and it's actually quite easy to remove the residue I had a go with glycerin which was um, I would say a fair disaster because it made the paper go rather sloppy and it wasn't very nice at all. Right so I'd say that is the back done. You can see why I've done it in the one sheet because it's a lot easier to handle. And I'm just going to turn it over. Now I am using an ordinary inkjet printer. It's an iBased ink, it's a Hewlett Packard one, not an expensive one, and uh, nothing fancy. Epson dye based, um, are not dye based, they're pigment ink, so they're permanent. This isn't a permanent one, it would smudge with water. But if you just let it sit for a minute or two after you've printed it out so that the ink has really sort of set into the paper, and start from the back you'll find that uh, you're actually losing nothing and look no residue at all on the cotton wool it hasn't removed any of the colour it feels transparent it's absolutely gorgeous and it even smells nice and to prove it's transparent I'm just going to move my backing sheet of paper down and you can see through that so you can see what's happened it's made it go a bit like parchment. Now you see there's some greasy residue there. Just turning it over to the clean side and what I'm going to do I'm just using a piece of tissue to remove the worst of it. This is actually the liner out of a paper napkin which I was about to throw in the bin and I thought no oh, that'll do. So it just wants to be dried off. Then it will be nice and firm and transparent and I can cut it out and do whatever the heck I like with it. It takes glue very well. It will take um, that um, liner tape well. It will take double sided tape well. So there we are. That's it. Now that just needs to dry off some more. I suppose you could actually put a piece of kitchen roll underneath and on top and iron it. I'm just going to let this dry a little more and then I'll get in with my heat gun. But uh, I just want to mop off as much as I possibly can before I start drying it with a heat gun.
and uh, another bit of tissue. Let's nice see what I've done with that. Mm. Oh, I've cleaned it up a bit. And I would say that's that. Right, I'm now going to cut it out and I'm going to put it together. A good pair of paper scissors. Anything with a long cutting edge is fine. But I'm just pressing on. I'm putting my glasses on. This is sad, isn't it? Once you hit the wrong side of 60, it all goes to bits. As you can see, it's beautifully firm. It even makes that lovely vellum crackle, which um, ordinary text paper doesn't. This is 80 GSM cheapo typing paper. I think it was about £2.99 for a packet, which I think is something like 250 sheets. The sort of thing you put in your photocopier. Right, so that's that cut. I'll just do this quickly. Now, I haven't done one before, so I may even decide that I don't want that little bit to fold over at the top. It all depends how it looks when I folded it down. I could do it on my paper trimmer, but then it's always a case of, oh yes, where did I put the paper trimmer? First step, I'm going to turn this over to the top and just fold that over. I like a double edge at the top of a pocket because if you're going in and out a lot, you're putting a fair amount of wear and tear on it. Isn't that strange? Do you know it even folds like vellum? That little silver crease. Right, well, if it isn't, it's just too bad. It's going to have to do. So the principle is I'm going to fold that around there and then stick it down. So that just fits nicely there. This is where I could actually do with scoring it. And you can never see a scoreboard when you want one either. Oh. Now I don't need it, I've found my scoreboard combined paper trimmer. So wouldn't you know, <clears throat> there we are. Okay, so I just want to see whether there's a straight line. So I want that at the two. This is the We Are Memory Keepers one. I think I'm probably off not completely straight, but it's just too bad. Right, I want to line that one up there. about there. So I'm just going to cut across that little fold where the two lines cross and the same on that side. So that will fold up and back and up. Just get that out of the way. There's my other bit, which is the right way round. That's the right way round. And you can see how that's going to go. That's just going to fold around it. Ah, now I have been a little over generous, so I'll just trim a little bit more up here. And this time I will use the paper trimmer now I found. I just want that to fit inside nicely without some um, straining. Just a better little sliver as well. Especially if you're going to uh, fill your pockets up with stuff, you want a little bit of room. Yeah, so that's it. So that's basically the pocket. And then all I have to do after that is um, cut out my butterflies. So what I'm going to do now is just add a little bit of 
hmm, double sided tape on the edges. I don't think I even need to touch that fold which means there won't be any glue showing. So I'll be back in a moment. Right, here we are. I've stuck my little edges down. As you can see they've matted actually quite nicely. And there we are, that's the little pocket. As I say, I didn't bother sticking that other little edge down there. You could if you wanted. And I've cut my butterflies out. As you can see, they are not the best in the West. Um, but I think I'm going to actually have them up here. I'm just going to do the back of them. So they've got a little bit of movement. Come on, come on, come on. Now you wait. I either get no glue or I get too much glue. Because this dries clear. So if they do flatten down a bit more, it's not going to be the end of the world. And if they don't, great. So there we are, we have it. And that's our little library pocket. If I actually wanted to do any more fussing, I think I'd print out a couple more butterflies smaller and just sort of dot them over here, there and yon. But that's it. And uh, just to prove that, uh, yes, it is very, very transparent. Um, Here's a free magazine that we got um, somewhere or other and you can see right through it. So that's going to be gorgeous inside a journal or something. And of course if you don't like the straight edge that's what corner rounders were invented for and so forth and so forth. Or you could actually mount, if you're really worried about the transparency, glue here and then you could even use just a dot at the corners or even photo corners or eyelets. Anyway, there you are. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, that's the little library pocket, which now looks like vellum, and that was the cheapest piece of copy paper you could think of with a little bit of good old Johnson's baby oil. It's a bit rough and ready. This was for demo purposes because it's the first one I've had to go at with this particular paper technique with the oil, and um, it's worked out really well. I'm very pleased with it. Alright, thanks for watching everybody. Bye all.